the sand at the outside Don't understand the heart that it wants you to come as you are Man looks at the outside God looks at the heart He wants you to come and as you are Why do on the street No food, no place to sleep Come on, come as you are You see, people might call you nobody But you got everybody, somebody Come on, come as you are I love the Lord say Come up to me, oh, ye the labor, and I hear the labor, and I will give you to me. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Man looks at the outside, God looks at the heart, he wants you to come, come as you are. Hold to his hand, 
God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Well, on hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. 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 Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You ain't got to hold my hand, but you hold the one whose hand counts. You hold on to God's unchanging hands. Yeah. Friends will put you down sometime. Neighbors will forsake you. Your enemies will always try to keep their foot on your neck. But if you hold to God's unchanging hand, everything will be all right. If you Build your hopes on things eternal. Everything will be all right. Amen. 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 Giving honor to the founder and author of our faith, Father George Willie Hurley. Giving honor to the president of our wise men's board, Princess Shirley Ada Akar. Giving honor to the state prince of Georgia, and South Carolina, Prince Antonio Padron, and giving honor to all friends, well wishes, saints, good folk, friends, happy folk, family, everybody, seen and unseen. We greet you with the holy words, peace be unto you. Likewise. Amen. Amen. Happy. Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We are truly blessed to be able to get up this morning in our right minds, presumably in our right minds, amen, amen. to be able to stand here once again to tell you and to give you what God has given us. We are truly blessed. If you woke up this morning, amen. amen. If you woke up this morning and you can think and you can go about your business today, you are truly blessed by Almighty God. Don't ever say that God ain't done nothing for you yes. because God does something for you every day. God is constantly doing something for you. As the blood courses through your body, as the cells continue to rebuild, as the cells spin themselves and die and continue to rebuild, amen, amen, amen. If you got food to eat, if you got somewhere to get it, if you got something in your pocket, whether it's a whole lot or very little, you may not have anything in your pocket. But what you don't have, amen, you can get. Amen. That is by the grace of Almighty God. Don't ever think that it's all over because it's not. You know, that spirit that we call the devil, or some of y'all call the devil, amen. That spirit of doubt and can't do and despair, amen, will tell you that it's no hope, but there's always hope. Yes. There's always, you know why there's always hope? Because there's always God. Never has been a time when there was not God. Never will be a time when there is not God. And as long as God lives, amen, amen, you are blessed. 
You, as long as God lives, that's where your hope lies. Amen. 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 As long as God lives, there is no such thing as it's all over with. Amen. Amen. We want you to be blessed today. Amen. We thank you so much that um, you bless us by watching and telling us that this broadcast helps you. We thank you for the well wishes. Yes. We thank you for the amens. We thank you for the all hails. Amen. Amen. And we want you to know we appreciate you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you. We want to give a shout out to our brother, uh, Reverend Jeffrey Kernan, who is the Supreme Evangelist of the Universal Hagar Spiritual Church Association. He's taking care of some business today and uh, is not able to be here, but his spirit is here always. And uh, also the spirits of our brothers and sisters who just, just, just continue to bless us with their prayers and their thoughts and well wishes. We love you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank our own sister Tina Skip with for being here today. Always a blessing to us and a blessing to me especially. Amen. Amen. Make sure that uh, I'm on point because I sometimes uh, get off point. I, 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 I sometimes tend to want to go left when I ought to go right, but she's always making sure that uh, we're doing what we need to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Miss Betty Craig who makes sure that, that uh, things are right in the studio and gives all of us ministers down here encouragement. Encur you know something? In this day and time, it's hard to find somebody who will give you encouragement. Amen. Amen. They can be your brother or your sister in the church. They can be your brother and sister by blood. And sometimes they won't give you encouragement. But when you find somebody who will encourage you to do your best, Amen, amen, amen. And get upset when you don't show up. Amen, Miss Craig. Amen. Even have a problem when I don't sing. Amen, Miss Craig. <laughs> but we are so blessed and so happy to be here. And uh, we hope that we can give you something today that will benefit you. Our own Reverend Kernan preached last Sunday, uh, last Palm Sunday. And he brought a fantastic message. And we want to come today with the resurrection message. Amen. 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 Resurrection. Resurrection. Amen. I want to read something to you this morning. This is from Luke. Dr. Luke, as my Baptist brothers used to say. The book of Luke. Chapter 24. And I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Amen. Amen. It says this. Very early. I'm reading from, uh, I'm reading from the Good News Bible, Bishop Bill. Amen. <laughs> Inside joke. Amen. Shout out to Bishop Ralph and Bishop D. Amen. 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 Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. So they went in. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this when suddenly... Two men in bright, shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, <clears throat> full of fear, the women bowed down to the ground. As the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? Amen. He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee? 
the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and three days later rise to life. Then the women remembered his words, returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven disciples and all the rest. The women were Mary, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. They and the other women with them told these things to the apostles. I've read to you from the 24th chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Signs, heights, and shadows. Signs, types, and shadows. Amen. Amen. What you read in the scriptures. And this is to all my brothers and sisters. What you read in the scriptures, you need to know. This is about you. Amen. Amen. Not a storybook, but it's all about you. This is Resurrection Sunday. And I want to ask you a question today. Have you resurrected yourself? Amen. Amen. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you? Can someone come to your tomb right now? The tomb, the various tombs that we put ourselves in and, 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 and allow others and allow circumstances to put us in. Can someone come looking for you? And it can be said, he is not here. She is not here. They've been raised. They've risen. They've resurrected. Amen. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you? I want to tell you a story. I was up last night, and I'm always doing that. And I saw something on YouTube again, very interesting. So when I'm on YouTube, I don't, I don't, I don't, they got a lot of, a lot of mess and folk fighting on YouTube and all that stuff. Don't really care about that. I try to look for some positive and uplifting. And if a lot of us would do that, we'd be in a lot better shape mentally than we are now. Amen. Amen. I saw this on YouTube and it stuck with me. I'm sure you remember those of you who were back in the 70s with me. And those of you today, I'm sure you remember a band called the Tower of Power. You remember because you listened to those songs and jammed to them songs just like I did. And even today, you still do because they're still out there. You remember the Tower of Power. However, you probably don't remember the name Rick Stevens. Amen. Rick Stevens. Rick Stevens is the original vocalist for the band The Tower of Power. That's Rick Stevens you hear on You're Still a Young Man. For those of you who ain't too old, uh, don't pretend to be too old to remember that. But that's Rick Stevens. Rick Stevens has a story. You see, after they made that record, they became very famous. And as the business is, there was a lot of drugs and, 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 and things around, and he fell victim. So much so that not only, and you know it's God. It's got to be God. Because the brother said he was both snorting cocaine and shooting heroin and other stuff. And still stayed alive. Amen. Amen. 
But he got into drugs and then he got, he got into using and then he got into dealing. Still in the band, amen. As things would happen, he got into a scrape with some drug dealers and Rick Stevens murdered two drug dealers and received the death penalty, amen. amen. But as God would have it, during the time that he received the death penalty, the Supreme Court was <coughs> the Supreme Court <coughs> was deliberating on whether or not to abolish the death penalty. So as he was leaving county jail on his way to death row, the Supreme Court overturned uh, or abolished the death penalty. And as he was going to the car to the van. On the way to death, death row, the man ran out, ran out, said, wait a minute, bring that guy back. We got to re-sentence him. So, and these are his words, he went into court, and the judge said, Mr. Stevens, the death penalty has been overturned. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to sentence you. Not to life, but I'm going to sentence you to new life. And all I ask from you is that as you're serving your sentence, if you would be an inspiration as much as you can while you're in prison. Now here's the thing. While he was in county jail and looking at his situation, he did what he knew to do. And I'm saying to some of you spiritual folk out there, understand, he did what he knew to do. And he said he fell down on his knees and gave his life to God, gave his life to Christ. And as he was going to prison, as a judge sentenced him, re-sentenced him to what the judge called new life. Rick Stevens' resurrection began then. And he went to prison. Brother served 36 years in prison. Y'all hear me? 36 years in prison. Denied parole 17 times and was a model prisoner. When he got into prison, he never stopped singing, and they would let him out of prison to talk to the youth who were at risk to fall into the life he fell in. He would sing and lecture, but denied parole 17 times, amen, but never stopped singing, never stopped leading workshops in prison, never stopped because he had been resurrected. 40 years clean and sober, amen. And he says that proudly and he should. I'm 40 years clean and sober with the Lord in my life, amen. He resurrected himself, amen. He didn't say it was easy. I mean, you know, anybody who's been on drugs, you know, it's not easy. And you're doing cocaine and heroin at the same time and popping pills and in the life and dealing. It's not easy to kick that. Wasn't easy. But you see, the change had already come. He resurrected, as they, he, he resurrected himself as he left county going to prison. And he worked on his new state, amen. amen. It's not just enough to be resurrected. Not just enough to be saved, but you have to work on that. Yes. You have to live that. And he did. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you? Amen. amen. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you. Can somebody come 
and look and say we're looking for him. Where is he? Oh, he's not here. He's been raised. What you talking about, Reverend Hudson? You see, the Bible is signs, types, and shadows. Everything in there has something to do with you. On this Resurrection Sunday, we're going to shout all over the place. We had a good time in here this morning singing amen and praying. <coughs> because the Spirit of God came in all over America today. They're going to be shouting and singing. And those of you in the Christian church, those of us, amen, glad and, and, and rejoicing that Jesus yes. came out of the tomb. Yes. But I want to ask you this morning, what about your resurrection? Amen. Yes. What about you, brother and sister? What about your resurrection? Amen. Amen. I know some of us have a problem whenever you mention Jesus. Amen. We have a problem when we, when we hear that name, Jesus. And those of us who talk about Jesus being a white man's God, even when we paint him as he was a man of color, yes. when we show him as a man of color with nappy hair, some of us still got a problem. Amen. Amen. What you got a problem with? Ain't, oh, yeah. I know I preach Father Hurley, but I want to talk to us today. What you got a problem? Hurley never talked about you. He never preached against Jesus. Amen. You need to know that. Y'all need to know that. Because I know we're a little strange up here talking about Hurley, but you know, you listen to us long, you listen to us long enough, you see our point. But why do you have a problem with Jesus? Jesus ain't done nothing to you. Huh? He ain't done nothing to you. If you must have a problem, have a problem with the system that uses scripture and uses the word, so they say they use the word, to make everything like you never existed. Have a problem with the system. Jesus never did anything to you. And I want to say something. You know, I said that a lot of us, every time we hear the word Jesus, we got a problem. Well, the Bible is about you. And let me say this. You got a problem with the messenger? All right. But did you get the message? Amen. Huh? Did you get the message? The message, brothers and sisters, is about you. I told you that Jesus was a way shower. I told you that. Well, have you seen the way? Have you allowed the God in you, the spirit of God that lives in you, have you allowed God to resurrect you? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. There were you the lie. We're going to preach today. Have you allowed the God in you? You see, a lot of us, we reside in our own personal tombs. Amen. If you live in a time in this life, somewhere down the road, somewhere down during the course of your life, somebody you trusted, somebody you helped has betrayed you in some way or another, just like Judas did to Jesus. I always say, Jesus was the best friend Judas ever had. Because even after he knew what Judas was going to do, he never kicked him out. <clears throat> he never cussed him out. He ministered to him just the same. If you live any time in this life, somewhere, somebody has betrayed you. Somebody has turned you up. Amen. Somebody has crucified you. How, you get, how do I get crucified, Reverend Hudson? Well, guess what? <laughs> when folk lie on you, when folk tell everything on you, when folk do things to make sure 
that you don't succeed. And whatever you're trying to succeed in, brother and sister, you being crucified. Amen. And many of us have been crucified. And in this life, you get crucified over and over and over again. The tongue, the tongue is the instrument that does the most crucifying all the time. People say you ain't no good. People tell a lie, say you did things that you didn't do. Amen. They'll say that you're going to do something that you never thought of. They'll say you're one kind of a person and you're not that way of all. And not only that, they'll tell everybody they can. And that lie moves from one person to another person to another person. And then next thing you know, it's still a lie, but it's a whole big lie, a whole different kind of lie. Crucifying your character. We crucify ourselves, amen, by how we treat ourselves, amen. By how we look at ourselves. We crucify our minds. Amen. We crucify our self image. By what we say and do. We drive ourselves. Into depression sometimes. And we allow that spirit. And depression is a spirit. We allow that spirit. To get us so down. And we allow the circumstances of our lives to get us so down that we wind up in our own personal tombs. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we allow ourselves to get in our own personal tombs. And brothers and sisters, there's far too many of us who get in our own personal tombs tombs and stay there. You see, physical death is not the only death. Amen. Many men and many women die emotionally, spiritually, years before they actually die physically. And we allow ourselves to just waste away Amen. the things that God has blessed us with the gifts that God has blessed us with all the things that God has given us to accomplish so much greatness we just let it slip away and brothers and sisters the things that you let slip away the gifts and the greatness in you that you allow to just language I need you to know nobody else can get your gift. Nobody else can get what God has blessed you with. But if you don't do anything with it, it will just lay that language there and die with you. Amen. Amen. We allow ourselves to stay in our own personal tombs. Can somebody come and say, where is he? And it be said that he is not here. He is risen. My brother and sister, what about you? What about you? Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you? <coughs> Excuse me. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you? You see, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the power to change your life rests solely within you. The power to do what you want to do. The power to be what you want to be. The power to have what you want to have. Amen. Amen. Not what somebody else wants you to have. Not what somebody else wants you to be. Not what somebody else wants you to do. But what you want. Amen. The power rests in you. He is not here, but God has raised him. Brothers and sisters, allow the God in you 
to raise you from where you are. People will come all the time because, see, folk love to see you down. Amen. Amen. Folk love to see you in despair. Folk love to see you struggling. <laughs> and they will talk. You in your own personal grave, they will talk and talk and talk to bury you even deeper. Amen. Amen. They will talk and tell lies and even put things in your head to bury you deeper in your personal tomb. But when you know that you are God within, when you know that that spirit of overcoming, of overcoming, of overcoming lies within you, amen, amen. then you can resurrect yourself. When you change your mind, when you allow and, and think about it and, and live on that scripture that says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you change your mind, yes. you change your situation. When they come, the folk love to come and see you going deeper and deeper. But how about when you change your mind? How about when you allow the Spirit of God in you to lift you up? How about when you decide to live another way? <clears throat> when you decide to get off drugs? When you decide to get out the ghetto? When you decide not to get out the ghetto, take somebody else with you? When you decide that you want to have something when you decide that you want your life to be different, how about when those naysayers come and say, where is he? Somebody, the spirit says, he is not here. He has been raised and he's living a different life. The grave can't hold him. No self-made tomb. No people-made tomb. No gossip-made tomb. No political-made tomb can hold him. He's been resurrected. Amen. Nothing can hold her. She's been resurrected. And those naysayers, all they're going to do, they're going to keep talking negative. Amen. But they'll go find somebody else to put deeper in those graves. Amen. They'll go find somebody else to crucify. People will do things. Life will do things. But the God in you that almighty God put there. I need to tell you that. The God in you. That almighty God put there. Amen. Can overcome and lift you out of all things. I didn't say that it would be easy. It's never easy. But if you change your mind. And begin to live in the new mind. Amen. Begin to live in the new Resurrection, amen, amen. Things begin to turn around, amen. You see, as the story goes, they had Yahshua, Jesus, in the tomb. And to make sure that nobody came to steal the body, they had a stone rolled in front of the tomb so he couldn't get out. Life and people and circumstances will roll a stone in front of your tomb, amen, to make sure that you stay there. Amen. But if you know the power of the God in you, yes. nothing can hold you in and nothing can hold you out. Amen. Nothing can keep you down. Nothing can hold you back. You see, it's all about you knowing and you saying, I am God within. Amen. Yes, yes. There's no blasphemy saying that. I am God within. And the Christ lives within me. Greater is he that is in me than is he that is in the world. Don't matter what you say. No matter what you do. If I lose a job today, I'll find another one tomorrow. If I don't find another one tomorrow, I'll make a business for myself. 
If I lose money today, my father in heaven who operates within me has all the money that I need. I am God within and I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. No tool that anybody makes can hold me because I am what? A child of the living God. Amen. And the living God, the spirit of the living God lives within me. I am somebody, always was somebody, and always will be somebody. Don't matter what anybody says. Don't matter what anybody does. I am God within. And I will be what I will to be. I will be what I will to be. I will be what I will to be. You will be what you will to be. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. God lives in you. God lives in you. It is in God that you live and you move and you have your being. Have you allowed the God in you to resurrect you from whatever tomb there is? My brother and my sister, don't die. Before the time comes that you physically die. Amen. And after all, as we teach, nothing ever really dies. But you see, God has you on this earth for a purpose. God has you on this earth, and it is by his will and his design. And the things, while you're in this body, there's something for you to do. Nobody is born without a purpose. We like to say that when Jesus went to the cross, that was his purpose. Well, my brother and sister, what is your purpose? Amen. Have you asked yourself, what is your purpose? Have you asked yourself, what difference am I making being on the earth? And by the, and by the, by the reason, the fact that you are on this earth, you are making a difference. But is it a good difference or is it a bad difference? Is it a positive difference or is it a negative difference? God has placed within you all the greatness that you need, <clears throat> that you need to bless yourself and bless somebody else. To bless yourself and bless those in association with you. But if you allow yourself to remain in some tomb. Amen. Amen. If you allow yourself to remain in some grave that somebody else made, that somebody else says you ought to be in. If you allow yourself to remain in the grave that you say you ought to be in, the greatness in you will never be experienced by you or by those in association with you. I like the way that the late Reverend Strickland, Reverend Lester Strickland, Oak Grove Community Missionary Baptist Church in Macon, Georgia, the man who ordained me, he used to always say, God never made man to be trash. God never made man to be trash. And if God never made man to be trash, then in spite of what you might think of yourself, what others might think, you are not trash. You are a piece of gold. Every man and woman God ever made, you are a piece of gold. But the thing is, you need to know that you are a piece of gold. You need to know your worth. And my purpose here today is to remind you that you and you and you are a piece of gold, fine gold, the purest gold, Amen. because God made you and God put his spirit in you. Have you yes. allowed the God in you to resurrect you? Have you resurrected yourself? The last thing I want to say to you is this. Whether or not you 
resurrect yourself. Whether or not you allow the God in you to resurrect you is on you. Amen. It's on you. It's in your power. Whether or not you begin to look in the mirror and see God standing before you. Whether or not you begin to look in the face of your brother and sister and see God is on you. Amen. Amen. Sometimes they ain't going to be acting like God. Amen. Sometimes you don't act like God. Sometimes I sure don't act like God. But I know that I am God within. And I know that if I'm down, I can sure get up. Amen. Amen. The only one who can resurrect you, the only one who can resurrect you is you. Amen. Change your mind. You see, you see, with all the stuff that the Bible records Jesus is going through, getting cussed out, spit on, beat up, carrying his own cross. And some of us, brothers and sisters, carrying our crosses. And we've been carrying those crosses far too long. Amen. It's time to put your crosses down. I'm not talking about the cross you wear around. I'm talking about that cross that you carry on your shoulder day after day after day. That weight that you carry on your shoulder day after day after day. Some of us carrying crosses that ain't even ours. Amen. Some of us are bearing burdens and have been bearing burdens. Emotional burdens. Sometimes financial burdens. Sometimes mental and all too often, spiritual burdens. You need to put your crosses down. Even Jesus didn't carry his cross forever. You need to put your cross down and start living as a God and goddess that you are. Amen. Amen. But again, my brother and sister, it's on you. But God would not have you ignorant. Of not knowing. Amen. When Jesus went. <laughs> when he got hung up on that cross. And all the stuff that was going on. He knew that he was victorious. You see it's all about you. Things happen to us. But we need to know. We need to know. If you live this life. There's things you got to go through. Folk going to disown you. Talk about you. Things happen. But you need to know through all of that that you can get up. My brother and sister, resurrect yourself. Resurrect yourself this day. Resurrect yourself. Allow, see yourself. See the God in you. Look in the mirror and know that you're looking at God. Know that that's God looking back at you. God within. I didn't say almighty God. I keep telling you that. But I keep telling you as children of Almighty God. You have that spiritual DNA in you. Amen. And therefore, you are God within. I am God within. Allow that God within to resurrect you. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to keep on being what you are. Allow the God within you to resurrect you change your mind and start living what you believe. You don't have to believe what I believe. But if what you believe helps you, then live in your belief. But no, no, no above all that I can do all things through the Christ which is well within me. We love you. God bless you.
Jesus. 